Every four years, millions of lives revolve around the event that celebrates the height of athletic achievement, the Olympics. Spectators record different shows and different routines so they can watch their favorite athletes compete. And then the athletes make their final preparations, polishing their routines and running through the strategies for the millionth time, the sweat and tears award dangling like a carrot before their mind's eye. The smell of victory is in the air and the image in everyone's mind is a three-tiered stand with the winner exalted on the highest tier proudly wearing the gold medal. In contrast to all the hoopla surrounding the Olympics, little attention is paid to the years of rigorous training that produce a winner. Champions aren't born, they're made, and the tools that forge them are discipline, motivation, and realistic goals. What's true for athletes in the Olympic Games is true for Christians in the arena of life. Without the right training, desire, and objective, victory will always be out of reach. So what is the formula for becoming a winner? The Lord tells us through the words of Paul. So let's listen closely to our trainer. If we follow his advice, one day we'll stand as victors before his throne. One thing that is important if we're going to compete is to remember the prize. You might be wondering, who would run a race with anything in mind but winning? Who would train all that time expecting to lose, content to go home empty-handed? We would, spiritually speaking. And we do it all the time. We forget our purpose, winning the race for the sake of Christ's glory, and we just run. Unprepared, fatigued, muscles taut, wearing our hiking boots, we still run as if we had forgotten about the prize. We go and we take our place in the course as though the prize could be won without any running at all, or as if there were no prize worth running for. We dream and we loiter and fold our arms. We turn aside to look at every object of passing interest. Or if we did begin with some vigor, all the zest and warmth of the struggle grows feebler and fainter when it ought to become more animated and we care little of what hindrances occur to stop our course and to risk a dishonorable fall. Runners for Jesus, remember the goal. Remember the prize. The writer of Hebrews says, lay aside every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The problem is, is that we settle for things that are perishable. C.S. Lewis gives his thoughts on our easy chair attitude toward God's rewards. This is what he says. If we consider the unblushing promises of reward and the staggering nature of the rewards promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a, in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea, we are far too easily pleased. So how about you? Are you too easily pleased with the temporal investing your training time in winning withering awards? Or are you training hard for the day when Jesus will hang the precious gold around your neck? If we're going to win, it's going to be a battle that's going to occur in our heart. We have to win the fight in the arena of our heart. Now, if God were to open the door to the private arena of your heart, would he find an Ashereth, a Bell, a Molech winning the match? If so, ask him to give you the self-control to knock them out of your life. He will give it to you. And as he gives it to you, he longs for you to be a winner so you can honestly echo Paul's words, I fought the good fight, I finished the course, I have kept the faith.